Welcome to my thoughts on the 1990s X-Men the Animated Series Season 2 Episodes 11, Mojo Vision, and 12, Reunion Part 1. So, spoilers for the show leading up to and including these episodes. Another two episodes I absolutely loved. And, yeah, uh, please support the SAG After Strike. There's a link to donate in the description box, as well as links to videos that explain why it's such an important strike. And without further ado, let's dive right into Mojo Vision. So, yeah, the character of Mojo lets some of the writers and animators let out frustrations about television producers. That's, uh, yeah. And this is the rare episode that does not have a previously on. And the music for Mojo is appropriately goofy. And I quite like the nicknames that the assistant has for Mojo. And Mojo explains how he appeals to the lowest common denominator. The, the voice and these kind of meta abilities, uh, well, I guess maybe not quite meta, but, you know, abilities to go beyond his own realm and such really remind me of animated mask and freakazoid and such and let's see. yeah and wolverine yet again gets to take his claws to some robots so that despite it being made for children you can still have him like cutting off arms and stabbing and such and one of the or I guess this is the only one. The one that attacks Jean looks almost exactly like the Punisher. So again, working that character design in, very cool. And yeah, uh, Jean uses her powers to m affect the machines. Very clever. And Mojo, you know, bemoans that he's losing his audience to a bunch of dead trees. So were the audience just really, really figuring that they would be bored? Who brings a book to a live, you know, show like that? That's, wow. And, yeah, I like Mojo saying something like, you know, you will be crushed or I will crush you, and then he gets crushed, though. He does live and then tries to schmooze long shot and he does you know slip in there. I mean we're cutting cutting your budget, but you know, otherwise this is a really good thing. And Mojo even comments on you know, right before right as they're cutting to the the Savage Land chunk of the episode. He's yeah, and we meet Sauron, very, very cool. And, uh, you know, it's difficult for me to choose. I've known the X-Men character Sauron, the, the yeah, X-Men comics character Sauron much longer than the Lord of the Rings Sauron. So I guess if I absolutely had to choose, you know, the, the Lord of the Rings one is the one that's cooler to have in a live-action film. But, like, a pterodactyl, bi bipedal pterodactyl that can speak English? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, he's inching out the, the other Sauron. Although that guy can look the heck out of you. And that brings us to episode, Season 2, Episode 12, Reunion Part 1. And... Yeah, Magneto and Xavier yet again come across Magneto's mutates, and they are able to subdue the two of them. I appreciate that Morph is playing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and like a live performance. That's, um, I mean, if you had the ability to look like anyone, sound like anyone, yeah. I could see putting on a stage play, a stage adaptation of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's, that's, it's not the last thing I would do. And, 
yeah, Mr. Sinister is yet again behind, and it was another trap. Uh, you know, Morph is still being controlled by Mr. Sinister, and we meet Kazar, and the dude rides a Triceratops like two minutes after we first meet him, and somehow there's people out there who say that comics are not, like, absolutely amazing. And... <laughs> I go to I will go to great lengths to um, to help you, Mr. Sinister. That is kind of yeah, neat little. And the trouble with this crowd if you ha is you have to shout to make yourself heard. <laughs> so corny, and I love it. And I appreciate Xavier. You know, in in amongst like a lot of this episode is just fun comic book stuff. But they do manage to slip in Xavier pointing out to Magneto, great ambitions can sometimes have dire consequences for the very people they were meant to help. And... It's, you know, Brain... Is it Brainchild? It's, it's one of the characters says, you know, ah, oh, the Master's away, which means Torgo will play. And, yeah, Mr. Sinister is the master. I have to admit, when, I, when they said it must be Sauron, that was what I figured as well. And Morph ceases to be Mr. Sinister's slave, but with frightful, you know, what was it? Exquisitely bad timing, I'm afraid. Just, I, I, I aspire to be that eloquent right after preventing someone from shooting me in the back with a rifle. That's just... yeah. And... yeah, you know, Mr. Sinister is, is trying to... or wait, crap. Was that Mr. Sinister? One of the characters is trying to control, mind control Xavier, and he's like, won't listen, can't listen, be a teenager! And Xavier sends a message to the X-Men, and they know that they're flying into a trap, but yeah, to be continued, and this is, like, the very next episode is actually the season finale for season two, so, yeah, very, very cool lead-in to the finale, and I, I forget, do they keep doing, because season, I believe season one was also a multi-part finale, yeah, yeah, that was the, the, um, the time travel, and then other, yeah, Senator Kelly being attacked after time travel also. Let's see, season three might be, there's definitely, there's a multi-part, there's a four-part story right before the finale. I don't know if the finale is a follow-up. It has a different title, like, but so did the one for season one. But yeah, season four does, it ends in a four-part, yeah. The last four episodes are part of the same story, and I'm not sure about season five, but but yeah, really, really cool that they do these multi-part finales. It's, it's, yeah, and I appreciate that, you know, now, you know, Xavier has been away from the X-Men for basically this entire season. It, you know, he was trapped in the Savage Land at the end of Season 1. So I appreciate them bringing him back. I, I, I've quite liked I know I, I read some... There's at least one person who didn't really think it worked to have Xavier and Magneto together in the Savage Land for an entire season. And I can appreciate it. It's, it's a lot. It's, you know, 13 episodes that that's true of... I thought it worked. I've been quite, yeah, and and it's always you know always great when Xavier and Magneto are, you know, interacting, especially when it's a way that they're not actually fighting each other, but forced to to work together. It's I know it's a trope, but it just it works really well. Also, I can't believe I forgot to mention in yesterday's episode, you know, the Beauty and the Beast thing. Really love what they did with Logan there. Um, always a big fan of... I, honestly, most of my favorite stories with Wolverine are the ones where he goes off on his own. 
and especially there's like a plan. He's not just reacting. It's it's sometimes also great when he's just reacting to to bad things, but when he goes into a situation and he has a specific plan, he knows his enemy, you know, he's going after someone that he that has been his enemy for a long time. Maybe they used to be allies, but now they're enemies kind of thing. It's some of my favorite Wolverine stories in the comics. So great to see them do that kind of thing. You know, ultimately he was working with the X-Men, but he didn't tell them before. He just brought them in at the end kind of thing. You know, so yeah, really appreciate You know, clearly whoever wrote that episode, you know, has also read a bunch of solo X solo Wolverine stories and realizes that Wolverine is really, really great when you separate him out from the others. Uh, you know, not absolutely every single X-Man can, you know, hold a, a story on their own, but Wolverine is absolutely one of the ones that can, and many of them can, uh, to, to be fair. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate how goofy the Mojo Vision episode got. Like, it's very clearly... You know, really, really satirizing television, and yeah, like you know, a, a Miami set show where they're like on a speedboat to to get away. You know, I'll admit I haven't seen very much Miami Vice, but I feel like that's got to, and you know, the the show is apparently even called Miami Mutants. So yeah. And I Dream of Gene is, of course, a reference to I Dream of Genie. They've even got the, the magic lamp imagery in there. And the, yeah, just, you know, the, the yeah, and, and the, um, let's see, the, the one with Beast and Rogue, it's like spaceships fighting each other out in space. So you've got some Star Trek or Star Wars kind of stuff. I guess there wasn't really any Star Wars shows when this episode first aired, so it's a Star Trek reference, I guess. And... Yeah, this thing of... Yeah, uh, uh, Gene and Wolverine are like star-crossed lovers, and, you know, he has to fight to, to rescue her kind of thing. You know, there's a lot of television that does that, and because Mojo looks at Jean and thinks, oh, she needs a man to rescue her, he neglects to think about, oh, maybe she's actually one of the most powerful of the mutants I captured. Maybe I should not, like, be careless with her. Maybe she could completely destroy the entire Enterprise here. So that's a great little... I, and no, no character, like, calls it out. No character says, you know... If you had looked at Jean and seen a capable woman, you wouldn't have lowered your guard like this, but it just, you know, subtly gets it across for the kids that, you know, women can be amazing as well. And I suppose that's basically everything I had for these episodes. Really great variety of mutants here in Reunion Part 1. Like, so much... You know, it, it, it really, the the entire team that Sinister is is working with, fighting all these X Men. It just yeah, really really cool. I think that might be absolutely everything that I have. So yeah, um, catch you again tomorrow. Make my marvel.